Good morning. So today will be the start of our uh, course and introduction uh, to the uh, introduction to railways. We'll be starting with chapter one, introduction to the rail mode. So uh, we will be starting with uh, talking about the course content, the, this chapter content. As we know, we have uh, several chapters on this course. So we'll be starting talking about the chapter content. So let's start. So the name of the chapter is Railway Planning and Operations. And th this is what we'll be talking about. In section one, we'll be talking about introduction to the rail mode. What is the rail mode? Then we'll, in section two, we'll be talking introduction to railway operations. What do we know about railway operations? In section three, railway safety management how we manage safety in the railway environment. In section four, human factors, this, the, the, this system that uh, humans has to interact with, how we understand the different uh, factors that humans bring to the table. We'll be talking about railway operations and planning, how we operate a railway and how we plan it and why the section two is an introduction. We'll be talking in more details in section five. In section six, we will talk about railway planning factors on based on what factors we plan our railway or our route. On section seven, we'll be talking about demand-based planning. How we uh, plan our railway based on demand, based on population, and how we do we calculate this demand. On section eight, we'll talk about operations-based planning, how we make sure we have the right numbers of trains, how we have how we make sure that we have the right timetable and um, of course, much more. In section nine, we'll talk, uh, talk about freight railways moving goods through uh, the city and or uh, through the rail network. And on section eight, we'll be talking about computer aided planning, how we use computer software to aid our planning. In section 11, we'll talk about marketing the rail industry, making sure that when people talk about rail, the rail mode, they feel it's interesting, they feel it's worth uh, pursuing. So, of course, this is the lecturer, Firas Nasser, BSC in Civil Engineering, MSC in Railway Systems, some innovations in the rail, uh, rail uh, some innovations in the railway side, uh, on, the, on, on railway systems. And this is some of the pictures where I have been traveling and showing some of my innovations. Of course, there is more, but this is just a quick introduction. So, with section one, we'll start introduction to the rail mode. This section has five topics. We'll be talking about why railways, why we choose railways, and what, 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 what is the summary for the reasons for choosing the railway mode over other modes. Then we'll be talking about rail history, how the rail started, and how it expanded until it has reached the position that it is, uh, it is at the moment. How do we understand the railway as a system, and how do we understand railway nature and characteristics? Also, we'll be talking about railway standards and regulations. And finally, we'll be talking about the railway industry structure. What is an operator? What is an infrastructure owner? What is a regulator? What is a, a, a government agency? We'll be, what is a, a manufacturer or supplier of trains, of train control? So we need to understand how different entities that operate within railway industry interact with each other. And so let's start with why railways and summary of reasons for railways. So why railways? Why do we build transport projects in general, not necessarily rail? We might build them for profit and the early entrepreneurs started building railways for profit reasons. They really wanted to build railways to gain, uh, uh, to gain money and to become wealthy and to uh, have this new transport service that can overcome cars, horse and cars. So it's a new option that is more attractive than that. Also, but then we build railways to open up land for development and connecting communities. When we connect Paris to London through a faster uh, transport uh, mode, maybe people will transport more. Maybe people will be uh, uh, knowing each other more. So we, exp we shrink space through transport time, through shortening the transport time. 
Then we also enable workforce to reach centers of employment. Imagine that you are working 400 uh, kilometers away, but there is a high speed rail service that can take you to work within an hour or less. And because this service is uh, reliable and safe, you don't have to drive every day that for that four hours or to, uh, to drive for three hours or even two and a half hours and risk having an accident, the rail mode beca becomes a very attractive choice for mobilizing workforce across the country. Then we talk about gain low, gain lower cost access to markets or resources. Of course, if you move a large number of goods, the rail is very attractive mode over trucks and uh, the headache of having drivers. And uh, of course, uh, sometimes because the energy cost is high, also the rail mode becomes very attractive in lowering access to markets. And the final thing, we enhance uh, national security through troops movement. So if you have a troops and you want to move these tanks and the rail mode becomes a very attractive uh, way for mobilizing your troops. So again, why railways? I also want you to think from a social background and economic background. If we have a, a, a population increase, if there is a, a, an, an increase in the transport demand, people start thinking about transport and they start thinking about maybe rail, maybe road, maybe air, maybe it's, uh, waterways. They start thinking how we will transport things. So there is a social background that there is an increase in population and there is an increase in the transport demand. But also there is an economic, economic background. We need to transport more goods. We need to uh, uh, have faster way and more reliable way for transporting goods. So we start to think about the economic background. The uh, other aspect is about uh, that when we think about railway, it's also we should think about other transport modes. We should know that there is air is competing with rail, is competing with, with road. And you can see air and rail is competing with each other over, for example, a distance of 600 kilometers. Shall we have a frequent air travel to cover these 600 kilometers or should we have high speed rail? Uh, of course, within the city, uh, uh, urban transport compete with a uh, road? Shall we have a, a frequent bus service or should we have a proper metro service? So people choose railways when there is a large number of goods or passengers to be transported in a very efficient way. And also they choose it for safety and environmental friendly reasons. So these two aspects, actually the main pillars that make the choice for uh, considering uh, the railways over railways over other modes of transport. With this, we end our section here. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll continue on talking about uh, talking a little bit about the rail history in the next lecture. Have a great evening, and see you next. See you in the next section.